by the end of the lighting chapter, you are going to achieve the exact same look in your spaceship. Just look at the lighting. What's, What's up, up everybody? everybody? Welcome to Bad Decisions Unreal Engine beginner tutorial series. We are now at chapter five, lighting. Congratulations to all of you who have finished our modeling sections. Absolutely. You're now a modeling pro. Yes. Right now, it's time for you to become a lighting pro. And Let's lighting go. is so important. If you look at any movies or even 3D, if you've done 3D, then you already noticed that lighting is probably one of the most important parts of 3D because without it, your models as beautiful as they might be, will look like crap because the lighting is bad. So we're going to learn the basics of lighting here first. We usually do this in the very beginning of our projects, but since this is a beginner tutorial series, we didn't start with lighting because we had to teach you guys how to move things around the scene. So that's why. But usually you want to start out quite early. In order to start our lighting, we want to go ahead and create a new blank scene just to mess around with some lights that we have. And then we're going to come back here and block out our scene and then actually light up our hangar, not from the sky, because <laughs> Star Wars is not in, in, in a blue in, sky. Yeah, in a blue sky, it needs to be in space. So we're gonna come back here later and fix all of that. For now, we're gonna go back to selection mode and then we're gonna create a new level. Make sure you have saved everything. All right, we've already saved. We're good kids. We're gonna go to file, new level, and we're gonna go ahead and open up a basic level. Okay, basic level create. And as you can see in our basic level, as we told you guys earlier, if you hit if you hit control L, you'll be able to change your sun's position in the sky and the lighting will react to it. Now Farhad, what happens if I go ahead and just delete all of this? Darkness. Absolute darkness. darkness. Loneliness. Yeah. So we want to go ahead and bring all of this back. So if by accident you delete something, you want to come back to the default sky with the clouds. Or you've started at an empty level, which it will look like this. This is how you bring the lights back. Exactly. There's actually a toolbar that allows you to do it really quickly. So you can go ahead and manually bring them in the Place Actors panel, but we don't want to do that. We're going to go to Window, and we're going to go to Environment Light Mixer. And all you have to do is literally just spam, click all of these buttons, just like how Farhard used to play Taken and uh, Street Fighter oh my God. when he was young. I beat him all the time, by the way. We um, should do a challenge. We will do a challenge. We will see. We will do a challenge. You want to bet? Uh, you want to bet? Oh, I want to bet. You want to play right now? FIFA? Let's go. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to start by just hitting everything. Skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, height fog. And just like that, we're going to close this. As you can see, we've brought almost everything back into our scene. And we have the lighting here again. If you use Control L, it'll be back in there. And we can see that it works perfectly. So Environment Light Wixer is your friend. You can use it all the time to quickly bring in a sky and a, a sun to your scene. We're going to go ahead and select all of this. Control, select the floor and player start. Drag it into our lighting so it's not confusing. Player start, we're going to delete. We don't need that. And now... We are going to go ahead and bring in a cube into our scene just so we can see how it's reacting to the different kinds of lights that we're going to bring into the scene. So here, we're going to go to Add. And here's another tip for you. If you don't want to constantly go ahead and click this, you can actually come all the way down here, Place Actors Panel. If you hit it, it opens up the same bar at the left side. So you can go ahead and choose anything that you want, like the lights or the shapes. And then you can constantly bring in anything that you want. You don't have to keep going back to the drop down. Just a little nice tip for you. So Control-Z, we have our cube. We're just going to keep this here. And then we're going to reset its location, bring it to the middle of our scene, bring it a little bit higher, and we're going to increase it in size. Okay, just so we get a nice shadow at the back, we see what it looks like, right? Okay, perfect. So Farhad, right now, we are looking at a directional light. Yes. Okay. And the directional light in other software usually don't come with the sun and the clouds. Here it does, which is perfect. We can actually go ahead and remove the sun and the clouds, uh, sorry, the clouds and everything. So atmospheric, uh, sorry, height fog, sky atmosphere, skylight, volumetric clouds. And you can see that the directional light is no longer a sun. It's literally just a directional light. So using Control L, we can go ahead and switch its positions. And this is what you would get in other 3D software. Usually you just have your viewport. It's dark and you bring in a directional light, it acts like the sun. And in this case, we can go ahead and see the details panel as soon as we select it. On the right side, what can we change? Well, first of all, if you go ahead and change its rotation on the x-axis, nothing happens. But if you change its rotation on the y-axis, something actually does happen because technically you're rotating the directional light around your scene. That's what Control-L does. 
and also the Z. So the Z and the Y axis is what you can use to change its location. The location, actual location of the sun doesn't really matter. And the scale also doesn't really matter. So now we're going to come down to the light settings. So in the light settings, this is going to be the exact same for, well, not exact same. It's going to be almost the same for all of the different kinds of lights that we have. If this is your first time in 3D, we have multiple different types of light, just like how you would in, in real life. Right now, me and Farhad have a big lamp in front of us that is diffusing light. We also have sort of a rim light at the side, which basically emits light differently. And they are used in different scenarios. It's the same thing with the 3D software. So here, Farah, what do we have in the first option? Intensity. So that is pretty self-explanatory, right? Increase it, and we're increasing the lux of our light. So it's now too freaking bright. So Control-Z, we're going to decrease it. And you'll see that it's Dark. absolute darkness, right? We can then go ahead and change the light color to... A warmer color? Maybe a yellow. warmer color? Okay, we can do that. Or maybe green. This is stylized. Or a colder color, cooler color, like blue. Yeah, perfect. Now, me and Farah can't even tell if this is blue or purple. Can you? Blind. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell. So control Z. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is source angle. Think of source angle as how sharp your shadows or how smooth they are. So if you go ahead and increase the source angle, look at what happens to our shadows. So if you decrease it, it's absolutely sharp, which is not sometimes very realistic. I always like to increase that number a little bit and see what happens. Now our shadows are a little bit smoother, so it's a little bit more natural. Right, And the bigger the source of light, the smoother and the wider the shadows will be. And the smaller the source of light, this is exactly the same in real life, it will be very, very sharp shadows, right? very sharp edges on the shadows. We can now go ahead beyond our sliders as well. This is the same case for anything that comes with a slider in Unreal Engine. You can actually just go ahead and increase this number to, let's say, 20 or 50. And you'll see that the shadows are actually even smoother. You know, when I, I started know. UE, I thought that when you max out the slider, this is the max that you can go. Dude, that's exactly what yeah. I thought as well. And I was like, no, why did they just close yeah. it off? Why did they limit it? They never did. It's just they want you to have a limit in the beginning, but you can actually go ahead and increase or decrease it. Right? And then you have the soft source angle, which I never really use. I actually don't know what this does. Can we read this? Angle subtended by soft light source in degrees. Like it makes a tiny difference, but I, I really can't see it most of the time. So we don't really play around with that. Then you have use temperature. This is if you want to go according to the warm and colder temperatures. So this is not a stylized color. This is like real life. So you have the colder temperatures and the warmer temperatures. I'm going to disable that. Then these two check marks are basically just saying, do you want the light to affect the world? No, that's absolutely dark. Or cast shadows? No, that means no shadows will be casted by this light. Um, of course, this is not very realistic. Then you have two more settings here that we're going to talk about. Indirect lighting intensity, which means the light that is hitting this cube and now bouncing off to the floor and then bouncing back to the cube, bouncing off to the floor, just like in real life, it has these indirect impacts on the cube, which is basically lighting up the back area right here. If you go ahead and increase this slider, what do you think will happen, Farhad? It will be brighter. It will be brighter. Yeah. Absolutely. So you want to go ahead and increase the impact of indirect lighting? You can do that. Or you can reset it back to its normal value or even go to zero, which is absolutely not realistic. But hey, that's a cool stylized look, right? Yeah. Like an anime look. Yeah. So you can play with that. Then the last one, what is this, Farhad? Volumetric scattering intensity. I don't know. Okay, I'll tell you. So basically, if you played with 3D software before, you would know that one of the main things we'll do to make scenes more cinematic is add fog. If you've been to clubs, have you been to clubs before? No, never. Never, right? I don't like going to clubs. I, I, I promise you, if you <laughs> check out Farhad's Instagram, you will not find anything, okay? So if you actually go to nightclubs, right, when they have those fog and smoke machines... They exist there so that when they're shining those lasers, you can see the lasers go through the and light. The rays, yeah. And the light rays. So in 3D, if you want to create a really nice cinematic mood, we like to play with fog. And the cheapest way to do that here in the engine, unless you want to actually have a smoke simulation, is to use something called the exponential height fog. So let's go ahead and enable that again. It comes with the environment light mixer, right, by default. So if we enable that, at first there's nothing. But if you go ahead, and check out the setting called fog density. It says basically how dense do you want your fog to be. This value is right now really low. We'll increase that in a moment, but there's one other option that we need to check and we need to care about, which is volumetric fog. So this basically, 
if I were to explain it, it allows you to have those light rays, right? It enables you to have those light rays. And like the sun, imagine if you were creating a forest scene and you wanted to have light rays go through the leaves, that beautiful cinematic look, you need to have volumetric fog. So enable this guy. And automatically, Farah, do you see it? I can see the fog around the cube. Yeah. And now we're going to go ahead and increase the fog density and look at Too what happened. Foggy. Yeah, too foggy. But I think let's keep it for now just so we can see the light rays yeah. so it's easier to talk about the light. So right now, this is our directional light. And already, I kind of like how cinematic this looks. I, I don't know. It's just my preference. So control L. Let's move the light. Do you see it? Yep. Okay, you can even see the light now coming. And you can even see... The rays. The rays, right, in a way. But because this is a directional light, this kind of looks a little weird. Let's go ahead and talk about our next source of light. So let's delete the directional light. Farhad, we go to our lights right here. Which one should we try next? Point light. Point light? Okay, yes. let's do that. So what do you think the point light does compared to the other lights? It's like a light bulb. It's like a light bulb, yeah. but it's emitting light in all, all directions. directions. So it's like yeah. omnidirectional. And it's also one of the more expensive lights because it's shooting rays in all directions. And right now, if I go ahead and move it closer to my cube, I can see that it's working. But it's, first of all, very, very small. It's not intense at all. And also, there's some other setting that we have here that we didn't have in the directional light because directional light just goes all the way. This one has something called the attenuation radius, which means how far do you want to shoot your light rays. So before we even increase the intensity, let's increase this number. Okay, actually, let's decrease it to see the effect. So you see, I'm still using 8 intensity, 8 units, but my attenuation radius says how far do I want this to go. Yeah. This is to art direct yeah. your, your lighting in your scene, right? So I'm going to go ahead and control Z, increase the intensity, and you can even see now, thanks to the fog, the source of our light. Do you want to know what happens if you turn off the fog? You can't see anything. You can see the light, but you can't, yeah, you can't you can, see, you can the see the source. Yeah, you cannot see the source yeah. anymore. So turn it off. Look at what happens. This is what you would normally see. With the, fog, with the fog, you'll see this. And if you go ahead and turn off the volumetric fog, you won't see that anymore. Yeah. So that's why the volumetric fog is really important in order to see it. And it's perfect for our use case right now. So what else can we do with this point light? Increase the intensity. Okay, so we can go beyond 160 as yeah. well, right? So let's go 500. It's like super bright right now. And the attenuation radius is too low. So let's go ahead and increase that and see what that does to our scene. Ooh. Like Harry Potter yeah. at the, yeah. the end of the wand. So if you were to attach this to the end of the wand, it would look exactly like the Harry Potter movies. Lumus. Lumus. Is it Maximus? Lumus Maximus? I mean, yeah. I think so. Do you, did you forget? No, Lumus is... Luma, you yeah. forgot. No, I didn't. I You're said supposed Lumas. to be the Harry I Potter nerds. I said Lumas. Yeah, but it's Lumus Maximus. No, Maximus, I think. Lumus is Maximus. No, it's Lumus. Search it. Search I, I it. I think I can. Lumus Maximus. No, Lumas. Wait, wait. Search Lumus Maximus. That was Maximus. the game. No, in the game, it would say Lumus Maximus, but it's Lumus. I know. I read the book. You never, you never read the book. I didn't. No. See? Lumus Maxima. No, it's not. Okay, bro. fine. All right. <laughs> No, it's Harry Potter. See, bro, Lumis say, Maxima. say that you lost. Lumis bro, Maxima. Say it. Okay, I read if there are five times. If there are any Harry Potter nerds, can you comment down if Lumis it's Maxima? Lumis. I read the book. Good. It's Lumis. Okay, fine. Whatever. <laughs> see? <laughs> okay. Never so, compete with a Harry Potter fan. Uh, I give it to you. I only okay. watch the movies. So we can go ahead and play with the light color, of course. I'm not going to do that with every light because we've already done that. And then we have the source radius here. Again, look at the shadows. Increase the source radius. You'll see the shadows are now a lot softer. And the source, soft source radius makes a little bit of a change. Do you see this? Do you see this bottom part yeah. of the grid? Look at what happens when we increase the soft source radius. So if you want to go ahead and art direct your scene, just play around with this value and see what happens for you. The source length actually just lengthens our point light like so. And you're seeing it. It's like a lightsaber now which is actually perfect for us. <laughs> okay, reset this value. Everything else you are already aware of, we're not going to touch it for now, okay? Let's go ahead and bring in another source light. Which one do you want next? Spotlight. Spotlight, okay. All right, bring it up. We're going to click this light right here and delete it. And now we have the spotlight. Click it. If by any chance you don't see it, maybe you pressed some random key. That key is probably G. G basically disables overlays in your scene, all these icons and gizmos, if you're just trying to have a cinematic view of your scene. So hit G again just to bring back the over overlays. So we got a spotlight. Intensity is super low. Let's bring it up. Attenuation radius, bring it up. Now find our cube, which is right here. Fire, let's increase the intensity, right? It's too little. 500. 500. Bring it up. Now here, 
unlike the point light, which is emitting lights in all direction, because we're only emitting lights towards one direction, think of this like the theater light, the spotlight, we can actually rotate the light towards a direction. So hitting E and rotating the light, I can rotate it towards my specific object, right? And then now when I pull this, oh, 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 when I pull this up a little bit, I can then go ahead and play with some of the extra variables that I have to really create that theater look, right? Which has a super sharp edge. And we can do that using the extra settings we have here, which is inner cone angle and outer cone angle. So check this out. I'm going to bring up my inner cone angle and I can see it actually displayed here. And I'm going to stick my outer cone angle to it. Look at what happens Ooh, to the edge. Exactly like theaters. Yeah. I think people who actually worked with lighting in real life would really enjoy this part. This is the best thing about yeah. Unreal Engine when it comes to the cameras and lights. It's actually quite precise, so you get to emulate real life with it. And so that's why it is absolutely beautiful for people who work in real life. We don't we suck at real life lighting. Like really yeah, we don't really touch it aside from the podcast and now. But yeah, we do touch it in 3D. So this is basically your spotlight. Everything else is pretty much the same. You got a source radius, the source length, right? Which doesn't do much here in this case. The soft source radius, play around with those values and see what difference it makes. Last but not least, check out the volumetric, right? You'll see it. I'm going to go ahead and deselect it and look at what happens. This is because it's volumetric. This looks exactly like from a theater, yeah. right? Now, this is your spotlight. The last thing we're going to check out is called... Rectangular light. In other software, sometimes this is called the aerial light. Okay. So here it's called rectangular light, and it is a rectangle. Right? It is your favorite light. It is my favorite light. Yes. It's the one I use the most and I like the most. I'm going to rotate it and it's emitting light in one direction, right? Over yes. here. And with rectangular light, the control that you have now is your width and your height. So you can go ahead and increase your width and your height. And if you notice, you actually do not have a source um, source length like the last, not source length, the source angle. And the reason for that is because in, in real life, if you have a box that is emitting light like in the movies... The size of the box depends, sorry, the size of the box decides how sharp the edges of your shadows are, which is why right now, if I increase, let's go ahead and just increase the attenuation radius here so that we can notice it. Mm -hmm. Look at the shadows, right? If I want the shadows to be sharper, I just have to decrease the width. You'll see? I don't need a source anymore. My source is my width and height. So it, it works slightly differently, and I want you guys to be aware of that. There's two more extra settings when it comes to the rectangular light that you need to be aware of, which is right here. The barn door angle and the barn door length. And if you decrease one, look at what happens. I'm closing oh, yeah. the flap, yeah. right? And then if I increase one, look at what happens. Oh, you make it more directional. Yes, precisely. So you can create a light that looks exactly like this. Wait, listen. Did you know that you can create highly photorealistic scenes with photogrammetry by taking in what exists in the real world into 3D? We've been using Polycam to do exactly that using our phone and drone. Yes, that's right. And guess what? They sponsored this video to give you guys 30% off their pro plan. So you guys can go ahead and try it for yourself. Use the code BAD DECISIONS in the link in the description. Back to the course. We just taught you the basics of all of the lights inside Unreal Engine. It's time to go back to our main scene and block out our scene and set up some lights. Light it up. Light it up. Okay, so we're going to go back to our levels here. Spaceship. Click it. We don't need to save this level, so don't save. We don't want it anymore. All right, so inside this level right now, I'm going to delete this floor now. I don't need it anymore. Delete it. And let's go ahead and quickly bring out our blocks. So in order to create a block out of our scene, we already know based on our reference, which I can pull up right here, we have a Landa spaceship at the back. We have these armies located on the sides and then we have these TIE fighters located here and then more stormtroopers at the back. So in order to clearly understand where these are going to be placed, we're going to be using cubes to represent place and represent them. And we have the place actors panel. So let's go ahead and bring out a cube. Put it right there. This is going to be almost in the middle of our scene, which is good enough. And then we're going to scale it up and have this act as our spaceship, like the Lambda spaceship. Is it called Lambda? Yeah, I think so. I think it's called Lambda. Okay, so that's good for that. And then we're going to pull this out, right? And then we're going to bring it to the side. This is going to be our army. I'm going to make this much smaller. You can use other representations. It's completely up to you. This is just how we like to do it. Okay, so this is one of the armies here. And then here, let me just pull this in, make it a bit smaller. 
pull it in here, pull it to the side. And then I, I like to duplicate this by holding Alt and then dragging because I want the same army on the left side. And then I'm going to select both and then duplicate it again one more time right here. So this is going to be one of the armies and then duplicate it again. They're going to be here, another one of the uh, armies. And they can be different sizes later on. We don't have to decide that. And then I'll take in one of these guys, duplicate it again, hold Alt. And this is going to be my TIE fighters. They're a little bit fatter and taller. So I'll represent them like this. And there's going to be four of them. So let's do one here. Faraz, did you know that if you had a TIE toy, you could actually use photogrammetry with Polycam to bring it to the scene? Oh, no, you didn't do that. Yes, that was I good. Did. That was I good. Did. That was good. We should have bought one. Yes. The Stormtrooper, Jet Fighter, you could use Polycam to 3D scan all of them and bring it to your scene. And it would look absolutely photorealistic. It's going to look more photorealistic than if you were to create one yourself here because, well, it's from real life. By the way, guys, if you want to give Polycam a try, I'm going to put the link in the description below. Okay. Perfect. Wow. So you blocked out the scene. We blocked out the scene. So right now we actually have the big spaceship. We have the armies right here. And then we have the little TIE fighters that are going to be here. Just a little mock-up of what we think the scene is going to look like is going to help us down the road to find out exactly where they're going to be placed, right? And also help us light the scene right now. So to quickly light the scene, I'm just going to bring in rectangular lights for myself. That's what I like to bring. I'm going to bring in one, okay, and I'm going to place it here. And I like to rotate it, face it downwards. So rotate it 90 degrees. And that's 95, so 90 degrees. And then bring it higher. Okay, I'm going to make it much wider. Again, this is the first time I'm lighting the scene. I don't need to be lighting it up in the most perfect manner. I just want some rough lighting. I'm going to increase the intensity to something like 500, which is not a lot. I need to increase the attenuation radius. Okay, that's good. You can see it's lighting up the scene. I'm going to go ahead and disable my default lighting. I don't need it anymore. And just like that, you see that our scene is being lit by this one light. Now, I'm going to, before going and crazily duplicating this, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder for my light. All right, actually, I'll just delete all of this, right? We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to drag my rectangular light into the lighting folder. And now, I'm just going to go ahead and Alt, duplicate, Alt, duplicate. duplicate. And then I'll hold all three, so Shift, select all three. And I'll actually duplicate them again, bring them all the way to the top. Now that way, we have a super bright, which is not even good. It's too bright, yeah. actually, right now. Do we need that? We actually don't need that anymore. I think you can take these higher in the, and put them in the middle. I like that idea. Okay, so select all three and bring them higher. Yeah, I think that's good. And this is perfect. Okay, perfect. Guys, we are done with our lighting chapter. That's right. You're now a lighting master. And I just want to remind you guys, the lighting is an iterative process. You'll start by setting up a few lights in the beginning, and you'll constantly change them and see what looks good for each scene. So don't worry if your lighting doesn't look great right now. We're just trying to have some lights so that we can see what's in our scene. So you're actually doing very good right now. Just keep going. Congratulations to all of you who came this far. The next two chapters are one of the most important ones. Yes. We are going through materials and texture. So make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified when we upload those videos. All right. See you guys on the next one. Ciao. Ciao.